Okay, guys, we receive your instructions. Obey my command at all times and protect yourself at all times. Shake them up. Good luck. And we take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event. The 38-year-old Mary Spencer will enjoy advantages in both height and reach as she heads into the rematch against Femke Hermans with the vacant IBF 154-pound title on the line. Round one scheduled for 10. Mary Spencer entering this bout with a new team. Samuel Dakari, now her trainer. And Dakari said that he put Spencer through hell in training camp and told Spencer that if MK tries to take you to hell, you will feel at home. You're going to sit in your living room. You're going to offer her a cup of tea. And if she wants to dance, you're going to lead the dance. <laughs> that was amazing. And if, uh, if Mary Spencer does to Femke Hermans what her coach did to that take her to hell analogy, then she will beat her into submission. But I don't think it'll be that easy tonight, Corey. Well, it certainly wasn't easy the first time around. Hermans was mostly dominant in that fight, and Hermans really was dominant because she took the initiative. It was not only the stance switches that kept Spencer off balance, but it was Herman seemingly just thinking a little bit faster time and time again. Yeah, there were the stance switches, and there was a point where Herman switched southpaw, hit Spencer with a straight left hand that appeared to knock her down, but it was ruled a slip. But it was, again, to your point, Corey, it was the fact that she led the dance as opposed to following that really seemed to cross uh, Mary Spencer up, and Spencer just had a, a tough time all night catching up to that rhythm. I mean, it was also the first time in Mary Spencer's career that she'd encountered an opponent that didn't just crumble underneath yes. her power. I think the assumption was that Hermans would, particularly after seeing what happened to Hermans against Savannah Marshall, the thought was that Spencer would be able to do the same. Tight opening round here between Spencer and Hermans as our main event is underway with Hermans firing back off the ropes. We take a look at the keys to victory for Femke Hermans as provided by our French colleague Matt Cassavant. We've seen already the stance switches from Hermans, the upper body movement of Femke Hermans, particularly when she's in pursuit and throwing in combinations. We referenced Hermans doing that so well the first time around. The hand speed and the lack of hesitation from Hermans had Spencer in a lot of trouble the first time around as we now take a look in the corner of Mary Spencer and the keys to victory for her. A little bit more patience, tighter defense on the inside. And the ability to make adjustments as the rounds go on because you know that Armand is going to constantly give you different looks as round two is now underway. Key to victory number one, a little more patience, uh, especially the second half of the first round. We can throw that one out the window. Mary Spencer seems to have made a concerted effort uh, to fight more aggressively, at least early in this fight, or at least in the second half of the first round of this fight. Uh, maybe to show her minds that that first result didn't, didn't really bother her, hasn't deterred her. See Matt Cassavant issuing a 10-10 round, an even round in round one, and certainly was hard to pick between either fighter. The rare even in that over, Yeah. Well, they're not issued very often by official ringside judges. As Ramans tries to fire that left hand, Spencer with a nice reply, two-punch combination, then brings that right hand downstairs to the body. And Spencer's thinking hard. You can almost see the, the tension on her face. Again, it, the moment of truth tagline applies to her because this is her chance to redeem that first loss. And again, as we mentioned at the top of the show, to finally follow through with a big title, something, a, a, a title and an accolade that, defit, that befits her status as, as a women's boxing trailblazer in this country. 
but that can also lead up to pressure, which sometimes makes fighters fight better, but often, you know, slows them down. Beautiful left jab by Mary Spencer, catching her mounts coming in. And trading jabs there. Spencer gets the better of that exchange. So you approach the final 10 seconds here of round two. Very different pacing here for Mary Spencer. Showing that aggression in spurts, but able to outbox Hermans in spurts as well from the outside. You see, when you don't rush, everything goes easy. So, now, starting to touch the jab. Step right, she doesn't know what to do. Keep it in right. Touch with the jack, touch, touch, touch. And then once you touch, we'll be able to put your punch in. Yes. Brad, relax. Doing great. Everything is fine. You're doing very, very well. Okay? This is tactical stuff. Listen to this guy, okay? Touch with the jack, keep it in right. First fight. We take a look back at a very technical round for both Spencer and Armand. A technical round. The action is a little bit uneven. Uh, they haven't quite found their rhythm yet, which is surprising because you would think that two fighters who have fought before would just kind of pick up where they left off. But it's not a feeling out process necessarily, but it's just a, 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 a bit of a, a jerky rhythm to this fight so far. So round three begins as Mary Spencer attempts to make very important history as well. If she wins here tonight, she would become the very first indigenous Canadian woman to be a world boxing champion. Of course, we've seen Kaylee Reese, an American indigenous woman, win a world title. But Mary Spencer would make history with a win here tonight. Uh, another stiff jab from Spencer. Spencer had this fight seems to have a better understanding that Herman still has to come to her, and if Herman wants to land punches, she has to come within Mary Spencer's punching range. And you've seen Spencer land a couple of ramrod jabs so far. I think we're seeing a different approach from Mary Spencer here tonight, and, and she was speaking about the fight much differently than she did yes. prior to the first fight. Prior to the first Hermans fight, she said, this fight's not going to last any longer than my previous fight. She was talking about knocking out Natasha Jonas. She was mentioned <laughs> as a Claressa Shields opponent. Yes. There was that assumption that Mary Spencer would steamroll everyone until she got to the biggest names at 154 and 160. But reality is set in, and Mary Spencer, I think, realized that she's going to have to box if she wants to become world champion first. Yeah, absolutely. And men's boxing, women's boxing doesn't matter in the sense that once you go from amateur to professional, and Mary Spencer had a long, long, long amateur career. Again, got a late start as a professional, was probably 37 years old by the time she finally turned pro. Um, and you have to learn on the job that the, ha the habits that served you as an amateur don't always serve you as a professional, especially uh, as a professional with... Mary Spencer's pedigree, she goes right in against high-quality fighters, and she's not going to be able to get away with as much. Pull counter right hand there. Glances off the shoulder of Femke Hermans to end the round. Another very tactical round. Not a lot of clean punches landing in either direction as we take a look at the corner of Femke Hermans. Here's Spencer with that beautiful jab. Catching Hermans trying to walk in the front door. Hermans again trying to close the distance because Hermans recognizes that she has to be within punching range, so she has to come to Mary Spencer. Spencer finishing that combination with that left hook to the to the rib cage. We've mentioned Samuel Dakari in the corner of Mary Spencer. There's Antonin Dakari, one of the higher ups at Eye of the Tiger Tiger, excuse me, sitting ringside with Christian and Billy. And of course, the president, Camila Stefan, as round four begins. So on the corner of Femke Hermans, the former Belgian journeyman, Maurice Bouffy, who is now a part of Hermans' camp formally, but Hermans started sparring with Bouffy over the last several camps, and she credits Bouffy with really improving her agility and her stamina as well. 
mentioned the kind of career turnaround, would you call it, for Femke Hermans mm. after a couple of high-profile losses. Now on the cusp of a world title in a second world in a second weight class. Yeah, and again, what's even more impressive is she told us yesterday she's doing this while still holding down a full-time job. She's right, a, a warehouse supervisor back in Belgium. Doesn't take many vacation days. Like fight week is usually her her vacation. And as she told us. Thursday she flies out of here, Friday she'll be back at work. Yeah, the economic realities of women's boxing, Femke Hermans could leave with a world title and be back in the warehouse on Friday. Her and her husband in past fights have actually had spaghetti and pizza dinners that they've cooked themselves in order to fundraise to fight for a world title. It is the realities of women's boxing, the effort they have to put in just to get in the ring is on a different level. Here's that jab again. Beautiful counter, counter right hand from Mary Spencer. One of the more eye-catching shots of the fight there from Spencer, that right hand. 20 seconds remaining here in round four. And Spencer's timing this, this time out just seems to be so much sharper and more refined than it was the first fight. The first fight, again, as you mentioned, she just fully expected to enter the ring and steamroll Femke Hermans and did not have a plan B when steamrolling her didn't work. But now, plan A, boxer, seems to be working pretty well. Again. Okay. Every time you're moving right, it's easy. Every time she's throwing the right, you need to cut her. Okay, so move right. When you see the right, then you need to cut the right. I want you to keep touching what that job is painting. Everything else is doing wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Not yet, not yet. Round five begins. Mary Spencer and Femke Hermans here in our main event. The IBF 154 pound title, the vacant title on the line. Most recently held by Natasha Jonas, who's now a welterweight champion, but still Ring Magazine's 154 pound champion until unseated. You see our uh, French colleague, Matt Cassavant, giving that last round to Mary Spencer, giving round three to Femke Hermans very much a competitive bout to this point, but in comparison to the first fight, Morgan, I still think we have to talk about the improvements that Mary Spencer is making because, you know, that was an 8-2 kind of fight last time yes. out. But Mary Spencer now, where she maybe had trouble identifying the shots coming at her last time, she's seeing them now. It's about, you know, gaining a little bit more regularity with landing her counters this time around. Yes, and you hear that advice in the corner, right? Stay on the jab counter the right hand when it comes, and Mary Spencer is doing a good job of following that instruction, uh, which partly explains why she's doing so much better this time than she did the last time. She's realizing success is not just a matter of walking forward, running forward, bull rushing people. Although Spencer did eat in a right uppercut there. Well, to that point, one thing we are seeing that has carried over from the first fight, it is still Ermans who's less hesitant and generally is the one yes. leading the dance. Especially this round. Ermans is letting her hands go a little bit more, a little bit more fluid. And you can see Spencer looking a little bit impatient, like right there, short arming that right hand and eating a counter jab because of it. Good round for Femke Hermans.
There's Hermans coming forward, a little bit reckless. Spencer with the counter right hand that her corner has been asking for. Here they are at close range. Hermans with an uppercut, partially landed. And there's Spencer with the counter right hand, glancing blow off of Hermans' shoulder. But that's the kind of that's the kind of shot that her corner is asking her for. It's not going to land every time, but it's going to land often enough. Round six begins. Mary Spencer is Ojibwe from the Cape Croker First Nation, looking to become the first Canadian Indigenous woman to win a world boxing title. As in a tight affair here with Femke Hermans with the IBF 154 pound title on the line. Good right hand there from Hermans. I was gonna comment, Corey, Hermans doing a very smart thing to open this round. Not just diving in, coming forward behind the jab, not just one jab, doubling and tripling the jab. Giving Spencer to, something to think about that she comes behind him with that right hand. We've talked about Ermans taking the initiative, and, and often, Morgan, in boxing, we talk about experience as this kind of nebulous thing. Yes. But Ermans really quantified it to us. She said, listen, I've been in there with Clarissa Shields. Yes. A at this point, anyone I see, I'm not going to be hesitant in front of them. Yes. Because com compared to Clarissa Shields, everyone's a little bit slower. Everyone's a little bit less tactical. Everyone's a little bit less aggressive. Everyone's a little bit less confident. Good body shot there from Mary Spencer. That might have been her best shot of the fight. I think so. That left hook to the body, yes. Wicked shot from Spencer. Ramans takes it well. Again, shifting in between stances. Continuing to give Spencer different looks. One thing Ramans told us that she had seen out of Spencer in the first fight. She felt that Spencer tips her jab. Yeah. She feels that she can see when that jab is coming. And one thing we have not seen much of from Spencer has been the jab. And part of it might be those stance switches. Part of it might be Armand's just identifying. Yes. We've seen Spencer have some success, some success with the jab. Yeah, but we haven't seen it in the volume with the regularity that maybe uh, you would think she would use it given her height and length advantages. And then we're going to rinse your mouth with Okay, Mary. Now, look at me. I want you to come down a little. You're breathing. I never take in the ring, too. Okay? Now, I want you to stay smaller on defense. Don't get tough. Small step. And then you'll be able to work that button. Okay? Don't look only for the right hand. You need to touch with the jab first. You start to forget the jab, okay? Don't forget that. So I want you to jab first and small defense. So that's to put the punch together. One little jab, man. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. This combination needs to be a good one, OK? Let's go. Well, right on topic, Morgan. We heard uh, Sam Dakari telling Mary Spencer not to forget about your jab. Yes, he told her. Essentially, establish the jab and bring the right hand behind it which is basically what Hermans was doing to Spencer the, in, the, in the first half of the previous round. Double and triple jabs, right, right there. Even if it's not a stiff jab, just a blinder, bring the right hand behind it. Hermans is doing a good job of it. Spencer's corner wants her to do that. Well, Spencer's corner also wants Spencer to get a, a little bit smaller, wants her to tighten up try and shell up a little bit, maybe try and work her way to the inside. Like right land there. the body like that. We've seen Spencer land a couple of times to the body, but again, Ramon's just stealing that moment back yes. right away, just with hustle. Not all of this is landing flush, but in these moments, Morgan, your last memory is Ramon's throwing and landing somewhere. Exactly. She gets the first word and the last word. Good pressure here from Mary Spencer trying to find a route to the body. Gets countered up top by her mods. Yeah, and we've seen this subtle but like noticeable shift in the in the rhythm and the momentum and the timing of this fight. Since her mods has started coming forward behind multiple jabs and 
throwing either the straight right, straight right hand or the looping right hand behind it. And it's stopping Spencer from doing what Spencer wants to do because Spencer has to play defense. And one thing Ermaz has been willing to do here, as Spencer tries to reach in with a right hand, is just throw and hit something. Yes. Even if it's forcing Spencer to shell up like that, she's moving her hands. There's a nice big counter right Spencer. hand. Big right hand from Spencer. Might have been the biggest shot of the round, yes. but the volume still came from Vermont. Right, so I'm not sure if that was enough to win her the round if we're scoring, you know, objectively and with our eyes and not our ears listening to the crowd react. Tough, tough round to score, but Vermont's appear to have landed more punches. And there she is coming in, Hermans coming in behind the jab. And here's a, uh, uh, here's a moment. Spencer trying to land that big left hook, but Herman's timing it. Beautiful counter left off the ropes. Sorry, counter right hand off the ropes from Spencer. But again, Herman's just seemed to have an answer for every uh, telling blow that Spencer would land. Another very tight round. Difficult fight to score, Corey. Spencer trying to fire herself up, trying to fire up the crowd. They are certainly behind her here at the Montreal Casino, round eight of 10, with the IBF 154 pound title on the line. And Mary Spencer did a lot of the things that her corner was asking for in Big that left. previous round, like that. Yes. Shelling up, countering to the body. She did that. The question is, did she do enough of it in the previous round? That's, if I were a judge, that's not, that's what I would be unsure of. Uh, if Mary Spencer's flashes of power and flashes of counterpunching are enough to outweigh just the consistency and the, 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 the busyness uh, and the activity that Fem Femke Hermans is showing. And, and you can see that the, the stakes, the importance of this fight uh, for Spencer herself, but also uh, for the First Nations communities in this country, and also just for the, the, the community of, of women's boxers in this country, all of whom owe sort of a debt to Mary Spencer for keeping this sport, uh, putting this sport on the map for women in this country. And it's it's all, you know, not weighing on, on Mary Spencer, but it's all apparent to her. And she looks more determined now than she was even earlier in the fight. Uh, because this is an important fight on a lot of levels and it's still in the balance. Good body work from Mary Spencer a moment ago. Her counters up top. There is Spencer ripping to the body and doing the kind of work that you wish and probably she wishes in her corner wishes she'd been able to do earlier in this fight and more consistently in this fight. When you get her minds near the ropes, can you rip left hooks and, and roundhouse rights to the body? Slow down some of that movement. Final moments of round eight as Spencer counters with a nice uppercut to the body. Good finish to that round for Mary Spencer. I want you to put four points punch together, then a second attack, then you move around, you breathe. During training camp, you were able to do first attack, move, okay? Big, a big attack, move, big attack, move, and a big attack, okay? I want this, two rounds. Now here's Spencer stalking, landing a right hand and a left hook to the body. Uh, the kind of authoritative punches that her corner wants her to be able to land. Uh, but I think, and then a, another big left hook to the body. The kind of punches that they want her to be able to land, but I think want her to have been able to have landed more consistently throughout this fight. Yeah, those closing 40 seconds or so of that round might have been the best sequence of this fight for Mary Spencer. Yes. And, and if she can string that together for another two rounds, this one could be very interesting on the scorecards. Yes. It likely already is. Big left hook. Nice shot there from Spencer to open up the round. And credit her minds because she's taking some 
flush punches from a boxer that we know is a big puncher, and she hasn't been rattled, hasn't been wobbled, and hasn't taken a step back because of it. And we saw our French colleague, Matt Casavant, scoring this one. He has Herman sweeping the last four rounds. Has Herman's ahead, 78-75. Were that to be true, it's really crunch time for Mary Spencer, and it necessitates something big. And again, Spencer is landing the bigger punches, but I could see how Matt could come to that conclusion because Herman's is just busier and more consistent. Spencer lands the bigger punches when she lands, but Hermans is just steadily, you know, putting deposits in. Well, we mentioned Hermans will be back at work at the warehouse <laughs> as a supervisor on Friday. Well, the, the assembly line doesn't stop moving in terms of her offensive output, Morgan. No. It just keeps churning. A stiff jab there from Mary Spencer. And again, Hermans has showed a great chin, she's taken some big punches, hasn't taken a step back, and really top-notch conditioning, because she's as busy now as she was, maybe even a little bit busier as she was earlier in the fight. Good combination there from her mom. Still fresh enough to move forward. Five-punch combination, about three of those connected from her mom's as Spencer trying again to get to the inside and counter to the body. Final moments of round nine. A nail biter of a main event here with some scorecards that could be very interesting. There's Spencer. Backing Hermans up behind a jab. Hermans really smartly pivoting, circling off the ropes. Putting Spencer there and letting her punches go. Again, Hermans taking the initiative, moving forward, looping that left hand around Mary Spencer's guard. Hermans smiling in the corner. Uh, whatever her game plan was, Again, she's had to make adjustments. This fight is not unfolding like the first one did. She had to make some adjustments early, but the last few rounds, again, Hermans has regained the initiative, uh, has the fight happening at her space, her distance, her timing. Tenth and final round, round 20, between Mary Spencer and Femke Hermans. The IBF 154-pound title on the line, and Mary Spencer is fighting like someone who doesn't just need this final round, but might, might, might need something big. I think she does need a knockout. This is just me. Uh, oh, big shot huge there Huge right hand. Huge right hand, and Hermans took it. You mentioned the gravity of this moment for Mary Spencer, but for Fepke Hermans, she has been here before. To be quite frank, she's been in bigger fights before, and you saw her attitude in the corner. It was the face of someone who has been here before. Absolutely, and I think I saw her talking to Mary Spencer in some of these clinches. I don't know what she was saying. In the fighter meeting, she told us when Mary Spencer was talking to her in the last fight, it was a sign that Mary Spencer was rattled. Final minute of this fight. It was a good start to the round for Mary Spencer. But again, just the consistency of Hermans, her ability uh, to let her offense go, get the fight back on her terms, even after she takes a big punch, has been admirable. Very impressive. The last 30 seconds or so of this round have been all Hermans. She's just letting her hands go. Spencer landed a, a check hook in that sequence, but she needs to land some, something bigger than that, more than that, needed to have done that more often. Stiff jab there from Hermans, constantly switching stances, not allowing Mary Spencer to get a rhythm here, one that she desperately needs. As she looks for something big, Mary Spencer might need a little help on the scorecards here. And that'll do it. A deep breath from Spencer. And the mild applause from the audience yeah. tells you 
what even the Mary Spencer fans in attendance here are thinking about what these scorecards could look what like. What they think about what the outcome is going to be was not a carbon copy of the first fight. They didn't pick up. This was not like round one of this fight was not round 11 of the previous no. fight. Uh, it took them a while to find their rhythm and for this fight to take on the character that it wound up taking on. Uh, but as the rounds progressed, um, Hermans, just with the superior timing uh, and a better sense of when to lead and when to follow, uh, I think started pulling out some of the, the later rounds and putting some distance between herself and Spencer uh, in terms of the eye test, if, if not the actual scorecards. And it may be, Morgan, that Hermans just has the kryptonite of a style <laughs> for a Mary Spencer, who still probably hits about as hard as anyone at 154 in the women's game, but it's a style that necessitates a little bit of downhill momentum. Yes. And if you're constantly looking at an opponent that's switching and switching and, and altering cadences and is hustling, that's proven very difficult for Spencer to deal with. Absolutely. Even in this fight, uh, it does not appear to have been a fight that Mary Spencer won, but you can see how she will beat most people with her length with her strength, with, with her aggressiveness. Uh, but when Hermans, with some technique, with some tactics, uh, and with a really keen sense of when to lead, uh, and like you said, when to switch stances, when to give Spencer different looks, can really disrupt that. Femke Hermans looking to become a two division world champion. She held a title at 168 has taken part now in six world title fights. She's one and four coming into this one in world title fights. The memory of all those losses would be washed away. If she could pick up a world title here tonight. Obviously, Delphine Persone has been a trailblazer for Belgian women's boxing. Mm -hmm. She's made numerous title defenses, someone that Herman still looks up to, but she'll have a set of achievements that'll put her in that conversation if she could get the decision here tonight. And it looks like that decision is in, and we're gonna send it down to the center of the ring for the official decision. Mesdames, Messieurs, après 10 rounds, nous allons au quart de pointage pour la décision. After 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. La juge Tremblay remet une carte de 95-95. Judge Tremblay scores about 95-95. Les juges Leblanc et Rupert, pardon, le juge Leblanc remet une carte de 96-94. Judge Leblanc scores at 96-94. Le juge Rupert donne une carte de 97-93. Judge Rupert scores at 97-93 for the winner by majority decision and still IBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World and now the IBF Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Femke Hermans. So Femke Hermans does it again. The new IBF 154 pound champion and you see the emotion on her face and what this one means to her. Morgan, we talked about everything that Femke Hermans has had to do just to keep her career on 